Well, hello, New Hope. Great to be with you today. Let me read from Ephesians chapter 4, the first three verses. The Apostle Paul says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of of peace. Well, I'm sure you may have noticed it's a minefield out there. We're living in a day of unparalleled heightened sensitivity, a day when people are on edge and words are powder kegs, where it's my way or the highway, where I'm 100% right and you are 100% wrong. Well, let me offer a couple of suggestions. And neither of these is easy, but both are essential for unity and peace, if not in the world, certainly in the church. First of all, look at the big picture. Keep the big picture ever before you. Too often we want to go to war over passing temporary issues. Now, they may be important at the time, but they're not all important. It's good to be informed, commendable to be engaged, exemplary to have passion. It's noble to want what is best for our country. But there are, there are ways to do that and still represent the one who has called us. Still walk worthy in that calling. There are ways to go on record in this political season without undermining our Christian witness. Don't lose sight of the big picture. In fact, we ought to see everything we do and everything we say in the context of our Christian witness and in the light of eternity. See the big picture, the really big picture. There are some things that transcend politics and politicians and campaigns and debates and elections. There are some things that transcend the here and now, like the gospel and the Great Commission and living right and going to heaven. So look at the big picture. Secondly, look at the other person's view. Now that might be the hardest thing to do because so often we don't want to do that. We, we don't want to open that door even a little bit. But you know, people have reasons for believing what they believe. <laughs> and believe it or not, it's not, it's usually not just to irritate you and me. Take a closer listen to what people are saying. It might, it might give us a little insight and understanding uh, where they're coming from. It would be a better world if we would listen more. Listen more carefully more thoughtfully, more respectfully. Is that not suggested here in Paul's admonition to the church in verse 2? Be completely humble, he says. The humble person doesn't do all the talking. The humble person doesn't talk over others. The humble person will actually listen to others. The person lacking in humility thinks they have all the answers. Therefore, they do all the talking. But Paul says, be completely humble and gentle and be patient, bearing with one another in love. This is love's way. And all through this epistle and all through this Bible, God's love for us and our love for others is the main focus. In fact, in the next chapter, chapter 5 of Ephesians, Paul says in verse 1, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Amen. Love's way is God's way. Let's pray. Father, in this day of 
hostility and bitterness. May your church lead the way. May your church show a better way. May your church be the source of grace and truth and light and love. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.